Hey everyone, Silver Steeler here. Finally going to get my Morgan Dollar Collection updated, remastered as I like to say, and with the new lighting kit, I'm going to break out all my raw coins and uh, see what they really look like without the glare of the airtight around them. So, as many of you have known, I've been saying for some time I've been wanting to get this video redone. I've had some additions. Um, and I've replaced some of my cleaned ones with some originals. Well, non-cleaned, I should say. So I've decided to go ahead and do this in some parts instead of making one long video, although there will be a long video when I put everything together, if you wish to watch that. But at, all, at the top there's all my raw, and I have all my graded at the bottom. I am two dates away from having a date set. I need the 1893 and the 1895. And I'm about midway to a little bit over 50% of having the complete business strike. It contains two Carson cities and a Redfield. So let's sit back and enjoy the ride. All right, segment one. This segment's going to cover coins from 1878 to 1889 in the raw so none of these will be graded and we'll start off with the 1878 philadelphia eight tail feathers i picked this one up down in louisiana in the french quarter believe it or not and count them up Eight tail feathers. I don't collect very many of the VAMs. Actually, any. I just think that this is a significant one to have. There were 749,500 of these minted. So, on to the next Morgan. 1879 Philadelphia. This one's not in very good condition. It's one of the ones that I've got for an upgrade down the road it's just sort of a hole filler right now it's not been clean it's just been heavily worn in that year they minted 14 million eight hundred and six thousand so that's why that eight tail feather ones that i had just before is really really a nice nice coin but anyway there's the 1879 philly on to the next coin 1879 oh they minted 2,887,000 of those and uh first year for new orleans minting a morgan dollar i consider this one to be an ms bu shape it's got some nice luster on it And yeah, nice, nice to pick up the first year mintage from New Orleans of the Morgan Silver Dollar. They were one year late to the game. Anyway, I believe this one would grade out. On to the next coin. 1880 Philadelphia. They made 12.6 million of them that year. Quite a few. And another BU example. Nice fields on that one. Yeah. I really like that one. Back's even better. The cartwheels going off on them. Very nice one. Perhaps one day it'll be graded. But for now, it stays on the raw side. To the next coin. 1881 Philadelphia. Another BU example. And that year, they minted 9163000 So, you know, not another hard year to get. But, 
I do believe that this one would grade out. It's got some nice luster to it. Great detail. Some excellent cartwheeling going off on there, yeah. It's a pretty coin. Like the others that are in the raw, perhaps one day it'll be graded. On to the next coin. 1882 Philadelphia. Another example in BU condition. And there were 11.1 million minted. Doesn't quite have the luster of the last couple of fillies that were just shown. But the detail is just solid on this coin. Fields are fairly clean. And yeah. Another nice looking example. To the next coin. 1882 New Orleans. Another BU example. And I picked this one up at a coin show a few weeks ago. First thought, maybe it was cleaned after I got it home. Realized that maybe it just had a couple coins leaning up against it. You'll see why here in a second. That one had 6,090,000 minted. And if you look here, you'll see on the fields in front of her face, and it continues throughout around the whole circumference of the coin, like another coin was laying up against it. Severely bag marks, contact marks, but her face is really, really clean in it. If it wouldn't have been for that coin laying up against the side of it, look at how it's mirrored around the edges. And it's got all that luster they all have. It just probably keeps it from getting a very, very nice grade because of that ring on that side, and it's absent of it on the reverse. So it's too bad. Probably get a really, really good grade had it not been for that but probably a 62 63 with that that's my take nice bold strike for new orleans to the next coin 1883 new orleans i give this one an au condition there were eight million seven hundred and twenty five thousand minted I always hear everyone say New Orleans had a hard time with their strikes. Their dies weren't as strong. They didn't change them out as often as they should have. So, the Mint was plagued with all kinds of production issues and problems throughout the year. So, whenever you get one of these in a really nice bold strike, it's always a plus. Anyway, there you have it. The 1883 New Orleans. To the next coin, 1884 Philadelphia. Another BU example. They minted 14 million and 70,000 that year. Very clean coin. Probably a 63, perhaps a 64. Anyway, another nice example, the 1884 Philadelphia to the next coin, 1884 New Orleans, a significant coin in my collection because it was sort of like the rekindling of my addiction of silver. If you've watched that video, it was this one, got it from Silvertown, Winchester, Indiana. Yes, that's where Silvertown and the Coin Vault produced their show from. And uh, it's all the same store. It's owned by the same business anyway. So Coin Vault, Silvertown, pretty much darn near the same thing. They minted 9,730,000 of these. And really, really, really clean coin. It's got a scratch around their cheek. But this is just a blazer. That probably did not help with my addiction. Is it probably, I'm thinking maybe a 64, even with the scratch on her face, because the rest of it, the fields and everything, is just really, really clean. A nice, bold strike from New Orleans. There's a lot of these out here. You tend to find when you find the 1884s, you see a lot of New Orleans. A lot of these have survived. So, eh, 
you know, still good to have it in the MS-64, maybe as low as a 63. Anyway, there's your 1884 New Orleans to the next coin. 1885 Philadelphia. A minted 17,787,000 that year. <laughs> Pretty high amount. And I've got this listed for myself as an AU. After giving it another look, I could get an MS-61. I think Mrs. Silver Steeler would tend to agree, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah that's, it's really clean. Yeah, it's a very clean coin. Doesn't look like a bad strike either. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, I'd give that better than an AU. Anyway, getting underneath the lights really, really helps you see that. Love it. 1885 Philadelphia. To the next coin. 1885 New Orleans. And that year, New Orleans minted 9185000 Little story about this one. That same trip where I got the eight tail feathers, we also picked up this 1885 New Orleans in New Orleans, the French Quarter, two blocks away from the U.S. Mint, which, as soon as we purchased that coin, we went to that mint. So this coin from New Orleans has been in the mint again that it was made in. Eh, odd little story. We like it. Who knows, it may have been in that same very room by that press that was there that, got, that struck it. We don't know all those details, but it has been back to where it was born once. Call that a BU condition. The 1885 New Orleans to the next 1887 one. 1887 Philadelphia. They minted 20,290,000 of them that year. They made a lot. Don't you know, this is a coin I have that I only believe is in AU condition. Probably picked it up at my LCS for like about, I don't know, 20 bucks. That's what he generally sells them to me all the time for. So finding an upgrade in this is not going to be difficult. Not at all. And I don't have a bad example myself. So, you know, it's on the back burner way down the road. There's your 1887 Philadelphia to the next 1888 coin. 1888 Philadelphia. I believe this one is in AU condition. They minted 19,183,000 that year. And uh, this was an upgrade between my last Morgan Dollar Collection vid. The other coin I had was cleaned. This one is not cleaned, but it's got some, I don't know, boogeration. <laughs> if I were to call it, and it's got some nice toning going around the perimeter, but there's a couple spots where, what in the world is going on? And there you see on the back a couple more of the uh, boogerations. Yep, that's what I'm going to stick with. My new term for the day. Still a nice looking specimen. A definite upgrade from the clean one that I had before. So there's your 1888 Philadelphia. To the next coin, 1889 Philadelphia, and that year they minted 21,726,000 of them, one of the highest in that decade, one of the highest in the series, and I do have this one in a BU condition. MS what? I don't know. I'd give it at least a 63. Fields are fairly clean. Not too much on her cheek or her face, and I don't know. Could who knows? Could get a sixty-four, but I'm gonna at least right now give it a sixty-three. Very clean coin. There's your eighteen eighty-nine Philadelphia to the next coin. Eighteen eighty-nine New Orleans. They minted eleven million eight hundred and seventy-five thousand of them that year. Mine is worn, I would say good to very good to maybe fine. So being the fact that they made over 11 million of them, it shouldn't be too hard to get an upgrade on this one, which is on my radar and will be done. There's your 1889 New Orleans. This is going to end segment one. For those are, that are watching the full vid, stand by for segment two. For those that just watched this segment, 
Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. I'll see you on the next video. Silver Steeler here, back with segment two. This segment will cover the years from 1890 to 1904, and then, of course, 1921. So here we have the 1890 Philadelphia. They minted 16,802,000 of them. Pretty high mintage. I've got a nice BU example here. That's probably a good 63, I would say. It's got some nice toning going around. The outside perimeter, very, very, very clean coin, too. So I like that one. Back is very clean as well. I believe I could get a 63 on that. Anyway, there's your 1890 Philadelphia to the next coin. 1891 San Francisco. They minted 5,296,000 of them that year. And unfortunately, I have a cleaned one. More than likely because they actually melted quite a few of those that year. These things carry a premium because good examples are hard to find. So apparently the person who had my coin decided that, hey, I'll make it look better and clean it. Now this coin right here is the only clean coin that I have in my date run. And then of course I don't have the 93 and 95. So this would mark three coins I'm away from having non-cleaned date run. And this coin is one of those three that I will need to replace. Almost like they, it's an old cleaning. So it's getting some of its luster back, particularly on the reverse. But the obverse is just, uh. Yep, it's cleaned. The only cleaned one you're going to see on this run. So why don't we get to the next coin? 1892 Philadelphia. And with these years in 92 through 95, mintages went extremely low and this one was a good example of that they only minted one million and thirty six thousand of these and i believe i have a cross between an extra fine and an au i would say extra fine plus got some toning going around these are one of my better raw coins i Paid a little bit for this, but it's also worth a little bit. Just a little detail in the breast feathers, which is why I'm giving it an extra fine plus. Like I said, you start getting into these 92s through, uh, through 95, and mintages are really low. So it's not cleaned. It's a good example. On to the next 1894, one. 1894, New Orleans. Uh, again, another one of them tougher years. Um, I don't have a 93, so I skip up to a 94 here. And I minted 1723000 of these. And I believe I have an extra fine. It's not been cleaned. I believe I got this from Atmax. Don't know off the top of my head what I paid for it, but it is a good example of those harder years to get. No, no rim damage, just, you know, no breast feathers, of course. But, uh, you know, these, these are the tougher years to have one. So, of course, I don't have a 95, so I'll be right back with the 96 onto that coin. No 95, but here is an 1896 Philadelphia. And this is when they started ramping up production again. So they minted 9,976,000 of these. And I got a nice BU example. They're not very hard to get. A lot of these have survived. So not hard to get an MS-63 or 64 at a reasonable price. I certainly did. I think my LCS sold this to me for around 20 bucks, which is not bad. They're just, you know, there's a lot of them. Their survivability rate has been very high. So... A very easy coin to get. Lots of luster on that. That's the 1896 Philadelphia. On to the next coin. 1897 New Orleans. They minted 4,000,000 and 4,000 of them that year. 
Uh, I've only got a good example. The rim's all still there. As you've seen during this presentation, I haven't had too many very bad looking coins. This is one of the few in my collection. It's going to get an upgrade. Right now, it's just a whole filler. You know, a lot of these were actually melted down is the reason why it's harder to get one of these. But they're still out there. You're just going to pay a little bit more for them. But there's my whole, whole filler for right now. It'll get an upgrade. On to the next coin. 1900 Philadelphia. They minted 8,830,000 of these. However, a lot of them were melted. Uh, the reason they were melted is, of course, for that peace dollar. And they picked on the early 1900s because a lot of those coins were still in the U.S. Treasury. Hadn't been handed out yet, so they were the easiest to get a hold of. So even though some of these have some high mintages, others don't, of course, they're still a little bit trickier to get. And this one, it's got a little rim damage on the bottom. I call this an extra fine, you know, it, it, it'd be an easier upgrade. It's not particularly hard. But like I said, those 1900s on 1901, 2, 3, 4, you know, they're just a little tougher to get. A lot of those were melted. And I'll be saying that more and more with the upcoming coins that we're going to do. So there is your 1900 Philadelphia on to the next 1901 coin. New Orleans. And that year they minted 13,320,000, quite a few. And when you do have, when a lot of collectors have these coins and they have them in the early 1900s, a lot of the, of the collectors will have the New Orleans Mint because out of all the mints that were striking the Morgan dollars, this one was striking the most. And, uh, you know, you start getting these in some of these MS-64, 65 grades, and they could be costly because of the fact that New Orleans didn't really do very good strikes. So an easier one to get of the early 1900s, but in order to get it in a decent grade, you'll still end up paying a little money for them. So there we go. There's your 1901 New Orleans. On to the next 1902 line. Philadelphia. 7,994,000 of them were produced and minted from Philadelphia. And you know... Again, some of the a lot of these were melted down, but these have more of a survivability rate than some of the others that we just previously looked at. So, not hard to find these ones. This is an extra fine. I'd give it an extra fine, maybe between an extra fine and AU, if that's possible. An extra fine plus, let's just say. Not bad. Brush feathers are missing, but all in all, not a bad example. Probably an easier upgrade in the future. But uh, there's your 1902 Philadelphia. On to that next coin. 1903 Philadelphia. And that year they minted 4,652,000. So the number's starting to drop down. You've got a certain amount that have been melted. So these coins can carry a premium. That's a nice BU example. I believe I got this from Infinity Coins located in Idaho. This is a really nice example. Got some Tony going on in the perimeter. Beautiful coin. I really love this one. One of my favorites. Nice, clean fields. Definitely be getting this one graded one day. Breast feathers are strong. Overall strong strike. A nice one to have in good condition. There's your 1903 Philadelphia. On to the next coin. 1904 San Francisco. A much sought after coin. And the reason being is not only were only 2,304,000 of them minted, but many of them were melted for the peace dollar. Heavily melted. Read up on it sometimes. So, this coin here in good condition. So, I got off my LCS. He wanted 45 for it. I think I paid 30 for it. That's what I talked him down to because I knew. The significance of having an S on the back of this 1904. Yeah, it's still got its rim. An upgrade on this coin is going to cost me. So while it may be on the radar, it's not very high up on that list right now because I've got one. Just happy to have one. Anyway, that's going to bring segment two to a close. Stand by for segment three. For those that just watched segment two, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. 
I'll see you on the next video. Silver Steeler here with segment four. All my graded Morgan silver dollars. So most of them are NGC MS64. Only have a couple PCGSs in there. So let's start off with the 1878 San Francisco. It is NGC MS64. And they minted 9,774,000 of them. In my other video, I think I constantly said I love MS-64s. I'm only going to say it this one time and then at the end, I swear. Look at the... This one surprised me. It didn't get a mirror. It just needed a little bit more, I think. Very, very lovely coin. No exception to the back as well. Just overall, very, very nice coin. And there is your 1878 San Francisco. On to the next coin. 1880 San Francisco. NGC MS64. They minted 8,900,000 of these. Now these early 1880s in San Francisco, a lot of them survived. So a rather affordable price for an MS64. You'll pay around 75 to 80 bucks per coin. But uh, really nice bold strikes. San Francisco was just on it with these Morgans back in the early days. And there you go. There's the 1880S MS64. On to the next video. 1881 San Francisco. NGC MS64. There were 12,760,000 of them minted. Another good example of some nice bold San Francisco strikes. This is very, very shiny. Definitely some nice strikes out of San Fran. Anyway, there is your 1881 San Francisco. On to the next coin. 1882 San Francisco NGC MS64. I'm on a little bit of a string with the San Francisco's there. Uh, they minted 9,250,000. I believe this one's got some nice tying going on. Yeah, there it is. I think the reverse is... Even better if I remember correctly. Just a little luster off that. Yeah, there it is. The blue and the... I don't know how well that's showing up. I'll see a little bit later, but... Yeah. Nice toning going down there around the 6 to 7 o'clock area on the bottom of the coin. Just nice blues off that. Anyway, there you are. That's the 1882 San Francisco. On to the next coin, 1886 Philadelphia NGC MS64. Minted quite a few, 19,963,000. And quite a few of them have survived. A relatively easy MS64 to pick up. You know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 60 to $80 for that coin. And you can see why it got a 64. Very pretty. All right. That's your 1886 MS64. On to the next coin. 1888 New Orleans MS62 PCGS. And one of their older, it's not a Rattler, but it's one of their older uh, air tights that they had for these. They minted 12,150,000 for that year. And yes, I do like to get the 64s as much as I can, but here's a 62. And you can tell why. It's got some more scratches on her cheek and, you know, Orleans and their not-so-bold strikes didn't help any. Still pretty coin. So there you go. There's your 1888 New Orleans MS-62. On to the next coin. 1897. Philadelphia, 
MS-64 and GC. They minted 2,822,000 of these. So you're starting to get into some low mintages here. This probably will cost you anywhere between $100, $125, So it's a nice one to have in the collection. You got some really nice bold luster to that one. Yeah, that was a good looking coin. So there you go. There's the 1897 Philadelphia MS-64. 1898 Philadelphia NGC MS-64. They minted 5,884,000 of them that year. So up their production a little bit. And... Uh, Not too hard of a one to find. Some nice cartwheeling going off there. And the back is pretty as well. Love my Morgans. And I really do like the 1898 Philadelphia MS-64. On to the next coin. 1898 New Orleans NGC MS-64. Or 4,440,000 of them minted. So starting to get some lower mintage numbers towards the end of that century. Some good toning going on across the top there. But for a New Orleans coin, this is a, it's a really nice one. This is one of my favorite New Orleans ones in my collection. Not the, but it's up there. We're getting close to my favorite New Orleans here soon. But this is a nice example. There you go. That's an 1898 Orleans MS-64. On to the next coin. 1899 New Orleans NGC MS-64. Well, they really ramped up production this year. And this is sort of the years where New Orleans, you'll typically find more of these in better conditions than the Philadelphia and San Francisco because they really started tapering off on some of their mintages. So here they minted 12,290,000. You know, if you're trying to complete a date set and go after those graded Morgans, you're going to find yourself in these years gravitating to the New Orleans because they just are a little bit more affordable if you're trying to get that date set going. And you can find them in relatively good condition. This is one of those examples. There's an 1899 New Orleans MS-64. On to the next coin. 1900 New Orleans NGC MS-64. Again, with a high mintage that year of 12,590,000. Again, New Orleans started minting the most of these coins compared to Philly and San Francisco. But nice, strong luster off that coin. Nice cartwheeling. Beautiful, bold strike. If it probably wasn't for that chin damage or cheek damage, this probably would have been a 65. Because the back is a beautiful. Very nice, well struck coin. And there's your 1900 New Orleans MS 64. On to the next coin, 1902 New Orleans NGC MS-64. They minted 8,636,000 that year. So they're starting to taper off from the high mintages that they had before. You know, a lot of these have survived too compared to the Phillies and San Francisco's of these same years. So, an affordable coin, if you're trying to get that date set going, you'll spend anywhere between $75 to $100 on this. But, uh, yeah. Beautiful coin. Nice strike. There's your 1902 O MS-64. On to the next coin. 1904 New Orleans PCGS MS-64. 
and they minted 3,720,000. So mintage is continually declining on the production of them because they're starting to run out of silver bullion for these coins. You know, but out of all the years that I've seen, 1904, there are a lot of these examples around. They, so the population of surviving is quite high with these coins. So, you know, easy price. And this is one of my favorite New Orleans just because it's just a white blazer. This thing is just, looks like it was made yesterday. Just beautiful. That back is equally as beautiful. So, you know, that date set you're trying to get, get 1904-0. Pretty affordable. Good looking coin. There's your 1904-0 PCGS MS64. On to the next coin. 1921 Morgan NGC MS63 from Philly. My least favorite Morgan dollar is the 1921 no matter whether it's Denver, Philadelphia, or San Francisco. They don't care for them that much. A lot of people are of the same opinion as mine, but you got to have one to complete the date set, right? So I got one. Actually, I got a bunch of 1921s because you can pick up BU specimens for, I don't know, what, 17, 18 bucks. I can go down to my LCS. Look like they were made yesterday. So they're very, very affordable. I've got one to complete the date set. You know, and eventually I'll get a San Francisco and Denver. I don't even have those two yet. So it's not very, very hard to get those. We'll have them one day. So there's your 1921 Philadelphia Morgan. And that's going to be the end of segment three. Uh, thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, and all those other good things. Let's stand by for segment four for those that are watching the full vid. Silver Steeler here with segment four of the Morgan Dollar Collection. And there'll only be three coins in this particular segment. Two Carson Cities and a Redfield. Right here in front is an 1882 Carson City, a GSA holder. They minted 1,133,000 of these. Um, you think, hey, that's relatively rare, and you'd be correct. The only problem was is they found a hoard of them in bank vaults. And uh, almost all of them survived in great condition. So a coin like this, you know, from App Max or somewhere, it cost you a couple hundred bucks. I think I paid 190 for mine. I just really wanted to have a Carson City. And there you go. And there's the CC on the bottom. Every Morgan Dollar collector's got to have a couple CCs on hand. They're the most treasured Morgan of them all. So there you go. There's the 1882 Carson City. On to the next coin. 1884 Carson City and the GSA uncirculated silver dollar GSA holder. Um, in that year, they minted 1,136,000 of them. So, again, a lot of them survived. They were found in that bank vault. And so, a relatively easy one to get. Again, around a couple hundred dollars. And it's just always nice to see a few of these with that CC mint mark on the bottom. Beautiful coin. They had very bold strikes. Very much like San Francisco. And they are the most sought after Morgans of them all. So there you go. There's the 1884 Carson City. On to the next one. Okay, last but not least. And my Morgan Dollar Collection happens to be my favorite one. The 1879 San Francisco. From the Redfield Collection. And it's got to say from the Redfield Collection. Because these Paramount holders... They had so many left over from when they did the Redfield Collection, they started coining other Morgans that weren't from the Redfield Collection in them. And to this day, there's a lot of, you know, misconceptions about it being from the Redfield. But if it doesn't say Redfield on it, it's not a Redfield. They also separated them. They didn't really have an MS grading system at the time. So the separation was just in its infancy about trying to go for what graded what. And so this one says Mint State 65. 
I don't know. Mrs. Silver Steeler and I have a usual disagreement about this. I think it's a 64. She thinks it's a 65. You know, you can get these graded now, particularly by NGC, which will just put a, a, a ribbon around the bottom and preserve the holder. You know, PCGS likes to take these things out of the holders and put them in their own. And I want to keep mine in its original holder just because it's getting all the toning around the edge from that. And who knows, maybe this Redfield will be red one day. So here's that. There's the reverse. Now, I picked this up at my LCS for $80. And I see these things go for a couple hundred, two to three hundred dollars. And it is just the obverse almost can be proof like with the toning that goes around it just a beautiful coin one of my favorite i i hope to pick up more of these redfields i love the story if you if you don't know about the redfield story look it up sometime he's an interesting character that's for sure so this brings this morgan dollar collection to an end i will update this occasionally i'm not going to go through them all again until i get quite a few more on hand but i think this will settle it i think i i got them on video the best way that I could those GSAs were a little bit of pain in the butt they're highly reflective but uh, you know there you go there's my Morgan dollar collection I hope you enjoyed it remember to like subscribe and all those other good things I'll see you on the next video